If you're using TubeBuddy's Keyword Explorer to help create and optimize your videos and not getting the results you want, that's probably because you're doing it wrong. My name is Daniel Battelle. I'm a silver play button content creator, software consultant, and channel growth strategies coach. I've helped countless channels find success on YouTube. Along the way, I've also helped develop some of the TubeBuddy tools that you might be using. And I have to tell you honestly, Nothing bums me out more than when creators struggle to use those tools effectively. Today, I'm gonna to teach you a better way to use TubeBuddy's Keyword Explorer. Now, I need you to understand that TubeBuddy is just a tool, and tools only work when you know what you're trying to build and how to use that tool effectively. The very first step in that learning process is understanding how YouTube actually works. YouTube is a platform of prediction. At any given moment, it's doing its best to predict what to serve a viewer in order to get them watching videos and keep them watching videos. As for the Keyword Explorer, it's ultimately designed to help you do two things. Learn what your target audience seems to be interested in and help you figure out what video you might want to make next. TubeBuddy is all about tags, and I hear the tags aren't all that important. That's probably the single biggest response that I've heard creators say that's the biggest mistake they make for understanding SEO and video optimization. It all begins with a simple misunderstanding of what tags are and what keywords are. Tags are a YouTube feature. The tag box is a simple area where you can add descriptive words to help YouTube better understand your video content. But YouTube has specifically said that tags themselves play a minimal role in your video's discovery. But here's where a lot of creators get confused. You can also add descriptive words and phrases in lots of other places besides the tags box like your title or your description. You can even put them in your thumbnail. That doesn't make these descriptive words and phrases tags. They're actually what we call keywords. Keywords are just simply informative words and phrases that help represent to YouTube and your target audience the significance and concept of a video's content, no matter where you choose to use them. Where creators often get confused is keywords can be used as tags and tags are often keywords but keywords themselves are not tags. That's a little confusing. Let me try that another way. This is my 1966 Mustang. Keywords that might readily help describe this car could be things like red or 1966 or Mustang, or even the longer keyword phrase, red 1966 Mustang. Keywords only become tags when I choose to put those descriptive keywords into the tags box feature on YouTube. If I use them in the title, description, or thumbnail, they're still just keywords. They're not tags. Does that make sense? As creators, we're often trying to find relevant keywords and phrases that best describe our video content, whether we use TubeBuddy tools or not. What the Keyword Explorer does is help us understand the kinds of relevant words and phrases that viewers on YouTube are either using in conversation or in actual searches when they use YouTube as a search engine. It also helps us find something we can't find without the Keyword Explorer, and that's opportunity. Let's use my car as an example. Should I make a video about this car? Are people even interested in it? Which keyword should I consider focusing on to give my video the best chances for discovery? Are there already a lot of other videos that have strong relevance, performance, and satisfaction metrics on YouTube that will likely get recommended to those viewers before my video, making the competition for discovery on the platform harder for my channel size? These are all questions you need to think about when you're using the Keyword Explorer. My advice is start here. Forget the title. Tell me what your video's about. I'll start with the keywords 1966 Ford Mustang. I'm gonna start by choosing what I think are the simplest descriptive words that would connect with the broadest target audience possible. In fact, what I'm doing here is trying to learn the language that my target audience speaks, or more to the point, how they tend to type those words into search queries when they use YouTube as a search engine if they're looking for this type of car or interested in content about it. Now I'm gonna say something pretty controversial right here. Forget about the score. <gasps> that score is just a quick reference to help you understand if something is completely awful as a target or maybe something worth looking a little deeper into. Don't ever use these tools to turn crafting a title into a high score game or you're really gonna be missing the point. The areas of the Keyword Explorer that you want to use to make a quick decision about your target are right here. The search volume for this target, which is actually excellent. The competition of other videos which have been made for the same target, 
which is actually a little lower than I'd like it to be, but not terrible. And the optimization strength, meaning how many of the highest performing videos currently ranking actually use the words 1966 Ford Mustang in that exact order in their titles. In the upper right, this data comes directly from Google, and it's telling us that the interest for this target in the last 30 days on YouTube, meaning how many people have actually typed these exact words in this exact order into the search bar, it shows that there's actually some activity. And that's a good thing. When I looked at the bottom, the target mark tells me that there's a video ranking in the top 20 on YouTube for this very keyword target that has this amount of views. That helps give me a rough idea of the kind of views my video might need to drive if I wanted it also to rank somewhere in the top 20 on YouTube search. When I click on the results tab, I can actually see the videos that are well optimized for this target because those keywords, when they're in the exact order, will be highlighted in bright yellow. When only a portion of that keyword target is in the titles of the top ranking videos, it'll show up highlighted, but in a much lighter yellow color. Think of these videos as being semantically similar, meaning they're using some of the same keywords in their title, but not the exact words in the exact order. And that's what we mean when we talk about keyword optimization. Now, I've always been a fan of simplifying wherever possible. So let me make one change and try exploring the same target, but without the word Ford, just 1966 Mustang. As you can see, the search volume is still excellent, but the competition has actually improved and the optimization strength shows opportunities, meaning that there are videos ranking that aren't using these exact words in this exact order in their titles. What I'm really liking about this target compared to the last one is that the Google data is showing me on YouTube the interest over time in the last 30 days is actually better than when the keyword Ford is included. Here's a great example of me actually learning the language of my target audience. When it comes to searching for this vehicle, it seems more people tend to type in the year in the model, but leave out the word Ford. That might be because it's faster for them to type it that way, or maybe they assume that people know that Ford makes the Mustang, so they leave the word out. No matter what the reason, I'm just here trying to learn the language that they speak and where opportunities might exist, so I can apply that keyword research to my next video title. When I scroll to the bottom, I can see that there's a video ranking in the top 20 with a lot fewer views than the last target, meaning there is more opportunity for my video to rank in the top 20 if I can just outperform the lowest performing video that happens to be currently served by YouTube for this target based on relevance, performance, and satisfaction. When I look at the results tab, I see that far fewer ranking videos actually use the words in that exact order without separating the two. Again, what I'm really seeing here is opportunity. When I title this video, it would make a lot more sense to have the words 1966 Mustang inserted into my title without any words in between them. That's it. That's all you really need to do at this point. The next step from here is just trying to craft those keywords into a title and make that title compelling enough for the viewer to notice it and have it connect with them based on their interests in this discussion. I could try a variety of title variations based on that keyword research. My point is that when I've done the keyword research, it's time for me to put my own creative twist on that title and bring some imagination to the packaging and the message I want the viewer to grasp in an instant and stop them in their scroll. I'm trying to think like the viewer and represent what's actually going on in my video in a way that will connect with the viewers who are interested in this conversation at a glance and hopefully win the click. Now, I hope this has showed you a better way to use TubeBuddy's Keyword Explorer, but if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. And if you wanna learn more about how to use TubeBuddy to grow your YouTube channel, Click on the video that's on screen now or the one that I'll link down below. Peace.